imagine that you have a very large meteorite coming down to the atmosphere with 20, 30 kilometers per second. And it hits into the ice and everything is blowing up in a fireball and continues down seven kilometers into the ground. In the same time when it comes down, we have offshoots of the big meteorite that lands on the ice that then later is found in the Kapiorgia River. A very good colleague of ours from the University of Aarhus, Nikolai Larsen. He was looking at this new bed topography that's coming out of Greenland. And it's, uh, it's really revealing an amazing hidden landscape beneath the ice. Then he saw this circular feature up in the northwest Greenland. And uh, because each day when we come to work here, we pass a very large 20-ton meteorite that's called Apalinik, that is actually also retrieved from northwest Greenland back in the 60s. I mean, it, it becomes, of course, an inspiration. We are in an area where you had a big meteorite shower. And then when you see this feature that starts to appear as a meteorite crater, of course, I mean, you start to link these two things together. Was there really a possibility, given its size of almost nearly 30 kilometers, that it was an impact crater? To, to find an, you know, this size impact crater is a very, is a very significant uh, discovery. You want to be sure. So you, you have kind of two things. One, that you feel the big excitement that we are onto something here. And then the other part that, oh, we need to collect and really get the evidence also to be, to be able to convince others, our fellow scientists and others, that this is actually the case. The amazing thing was that everybody was just on board from day one. NASA, who's doing the Operation Ice Bridge flight, Ice Radar flight, the new system from the Alpha Wigner Institute, where 1,600 kilometers of new ice radar was recorded. If you want to show that there's an, an impact feature here, one very important geological on-site evidence is to find shock quartz, which is these uh, quartz grains with shock lamella that is produced by very large pressure and low temperature. And to do that, we need to go into the field, go to the margin, survey it, do the sampling. And then we also knew, based on the ice radar survey, that there is coming channels from the inside of the feature onto the forefield of the ice there. And on the forefield on the ice, you find meltwater sediments, sands, and those we collected. One of our colleagues from the Geological Survey, Adam Garde, he started to pick those out. It took him between eight and ten hours to find one suitable grain that could be analyzed and that could that also tell and show these shock lamels or these uh, shock quartz features that we were looking for. And it turned out to be a smoking gun. Now we know there's an impact crater. And the next step is, what's the age of this impact crater?